Welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit, and I'm now joined by Jamie Peck, who's Professor of the Robotics Lab at EPFL. Good to have you here. Hello. What brings you here, first of all? I am here to talk about my Reconfigure robots uh, that we develop in the lab. They are known for being inspired by origamis, hence they're called robogamis. 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 Explain that. Robogamis are the robots that can reconfigure itself depending on its task. So think about robots that are multitasking. In this case, this top platform can move in a uh, three degrees of freedom way, and it can give you the force feedback in anything that you can think of. So think about seeing your screen where you're seeing avocados that are super soft. You can feel it's soft. And if you go to the next one, you can feel it's a harder avocado. So you're transmitting or transferring the digital digitally the sensation of feeling. Um, before we started filming, you were telling me that there's a lot of robots here. That they're the star of the show this year, um, but they're a bit limited, right? Tell me about that. Um, classically and typically, robots are designed to do one task very well, optimized for a single task. As soon as there's too much Wi-Fi going on, limited bandwidth, they tend to fail. That's the electrical failure or communication failure. Physically, if there are too many people going around, too many cables on the ground, they fail as well. The missions are failed. So I think it's a time where we need to think about how to make robots more intelligent in embodied way, in physical way. And how do we do that? By having more degrees of freedom, having the compliance, and having the safety in mind when you're designing a robot. Safety and freedom, there's a lot of talk about at the ethics of AI as well in robots. Are you part of that? Um, I would love talking about ethics. I'm not so sure how to formalize it. I think it's very important that we question and always be stay vigilant in terms of the changes that we are seeing in terms of technology. One thing you told me about was that your robot could be really interesting, for example, because you're working, you got a grant with the European Space Agency. Correct. Uh, a couple of the designs of our robots are made to be super modular, meaning that they can link up together and disassemble autonomously depending on the task. So. To go to space, there's very limited space on the spaceship. So you want to have a modular system that is intelligent enough to communicate with each other when they're linked up and be assembled in the di dimensions that you want to use for a very specific task once in space. And so what's the feedback you're getting with your ideas? Um, great feedback in terms of um, uh, creativity and application. So we are looking at different scales of these robots, as well as the resolution. How do you make them more reactive or less reactive, depending on the situation? We've seen a lot of humanoids this time Correct. around as well. Yes. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I have very soft heart for humanoids because I studied humanoids for my studies. Um, that's already more than a decade ago. Um, when I built my humanoid at that time, I built it so that you can mimic the uh, pitcher's throw in baseball and lift up dumbbells to just to show how strong it is and how uh, agile it is. But the problem with that humanoid robot that I built and designed was that even though it had the lightest arm that's comparable to human arm, it was not able to make a scrambled egg at all. And that's usually the question I get. Humanoid, great, can it do my house chores for me? Can it do something else? That's the current problem with many, of, not problem, but limitation with the current designs of robot is that they're optimized for a single task, the one that you thought of when you're building it. But as soon as you have a new task in hand, they don't perform. So what we need is a humanoid that can play baseball at a high level and make scrambled eggs. That would be nice. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Chris. Great to have you. So that was Jamie Peck there from the EPFL, head of the robotics laboratory there. And we'll have much more on AI for Good's Global Summit right here. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.